Alright, you are back with comedian David Boyle and I'm quitting alcohol. The Australian fucking sun is just too much for me now. It's so fucking sharp. The weather's been fucking great for about a week now, but I can't even go outside. I don't know whether it's because of the lockdown and there's less pollution in the air, but the sun is just piercing me. It's cutting through me. Maybe the fucking ozone layer's back open. Maybe we need an ozone tax and a carbon tax. We just had a miserable fucking winter and you couldn't leave the house. Now the weather's getting good. Within like three or four weeks, I'm not going to be able to leave the house again. The sun is literally too much for my skin. We need to pollute more. We need a barrier in between the sun and me. We need to accelerate global warming to protect my skin. This is how bad it's getting for me. Yesterday it was 33 degrees, it felt like 45 degrees in the sun, and I had to wear a long sleeve shirt with the collar up, a hat, sunglasses, and sunscreen. What is the point of trying to get a hot rig when you can't even be out in the sun? I don't know if I can stay in the Australian sun. If it's going to get worse as well, I'm just going to fry. There's probably only like three places left in the world I can live. I used to love overcast and fucking raining and miserable. That used to be my go-to weather, but now I like it sunny. I need some fucking sun, but it can't be too hot. The sun can't be too hot. Maybe somewhere like Spain where it's sunny, but it's not too hot. But it also has to be cheap, and if I move anywhere, the unemployment rate has to be high. Super high. Like the unemployment rate has to be so high that even if I wanted to get a job, I wouldn't be able to get one. That's the place I want to move to. But anyway, I can't even let that shit creep into my mind now because Australia's not even letting people out of the country at the moment. All right, it's Friday, and we're going to move straight into Fucked Up Friday this week because we have a fucking Fucked Up Friday special, something a little bit new. So I got sent in a Fucked Up Friday story from this guy named Tommy, a guy from Adelaide. Shout out to Adelaide, who's back in lockdown now. Not so fucking funny now, is it, Adelaide? It was all fun and games when you were shutting off the border to Victoria, wasn't it? Now look at you. The borders are shut on you now, isn't it? And the worst part about that is you're stuck in Adelaide. So Tommy sent me in a fucked up Friday story. And then about four or five days later, his mate Matt messaged me and said, Tommy told me you're going to be reading out the story. I'm one of the guys in the story. I'm looking forward to hearing it. And I said, if you're one of the guys in the story... Why don't you send me your version of events as well, and we'll see how much they match up. I was curious to see how much the events matched up and what things two different people remember of the exact same night. So tonight is going to be two fucked up Fridays, two different versions of the same event. So let's just get into it. So this first version is from Tommy. And by the way, I haven't read Matt's yet either. So we'll be on this journey together. Okay, so here is Tommy's Fucked Up Friday. There's four of us, myself, Adam, Liam and Matt. We're 16 in year 10 at school. None of us have our licenses and two of us, myself and Adam, had just tried MD for the first time a month prior to this night. Liam and Maddie want to give it a go. We originally planned on staying at Liam's house while his parents were away on a camping trip. We get to the day and Liam's parents are gone. We're all keen as fuck to roll with each other, but by a stroke of bad luck, his parents' car fucked itself at the end of the street, and the camping trip went straight to the bin. So here we are with MD and nowhere to fucking do it. I have this brilliant moment of genius and hit up our friend Layla, who had just turned 18 a few weeks prior, asking if we could stay at hers and do the MD. Layla's a chill cunt and says yes, but lets us know she won't be home till about 3 or 4 in the morning and that her mum would be home, but this is no drama. Jenny, her mum, is an absolute dropkick mad lad. She's the kind of mum that lights up a smoke while watching TV with her sons playing Xbox just down the hall. She, of course, smokes bongs and is on the dole. We rock up to Jenny's and I have the MD in my pocket. She sits us all down and shouts us a few cones and tequila shots which was fucking awesome. Jesus Christ, this sounds like my childhood. So this is about 7pm at this stage and weren't planning on dropping in till later that night. It rolls around to 9pm and she lets us know that she has a date coming over and she was cool with us staying in the lounge room 
while she fucks him in her room. These were her exact words. Jenny the fucking slapper. So her date rocks up, a 50-year-old fella on a motorcycle, which she met at the school drop-off zone. For the rest of the night, we referred to him as Dan the school dad. I offer him a few cones from my butt and Jenny gets a few shots into him. He was quite taken back walking in thinking he's going to get a root and four teens are just sitting in the lounge room. He ended up pulling Jenny aside and they went into the kitchen and we knew it was about us. The cunt thought we were cock blocking him, but he was unaware of how loose Jenny is. While they're away talking, I slip the boys their caps and we drop him. Jenny comes back and says we all have to leave now so she can get her fuck on. We pack up our bud and fuck off. So now there's the four of us sitting out the front with our caps kicking in. It's 10 p.m. and we have nowhere to fucking go, so we walk. Our mate Liam had been talking to a chick for a month or so at this point, and she invited us around, seeing as we're all drug fucked and we can't go home. We walk and walk and walk. 42 fucking kilometers we walked. That is a fucking monster walk. That would take more than one fucking cap. 42 fucking kilometers to the other side of town. There's no public transport in Adelaide past midnight. And to be fair, she offered us a taxi, but we were determined on the adventure and said, fuck you and kept walking. We didn't end up getting to hers until 5 a.m. in the morning where her and her mate were troopers and stayed up waiting for us. Liam ended up getting a wristy in the local park. Oh, beautiful. A happy ending. And then we walked into the city to catch a tram home. We were all coming down miserable and cold and tired. But this night has cemented our friendship together and we've been best of mates ever since. Okay, thank you, Tommy. Now let's move straight on to fucking Maddie's version of events while your version is still nice and warm in our heads. Okay, here is Maddie's version of events. So it was a quiet Friday night and didn't really have many plans. Tommy, my mate, calls me up and asks if we want to go to Jenny's house. Now, this was my first time meeting her, but Jenny is a bit of a hippie stoner mum. She's the type of person you could chat for hours with and have a blast. And we were mates with her daughter for whatever reason. We decided it would be a good idea to go to Jenny's house to have a few cones. So Jenny's place was in a bit of a rundown neighborhood, but I wasn't faced. Tommy and I got there and to my surprise, our other close mate, Liam, decided to Uber to Jenny's too. When we got there, Liam and I met Jenny and her boyfriend as well. He was a big, bikey-looking bloke with long beard and tattoos everywhere. Liam, Tommy, and I sat on the couch, and Jenny joined us for some cones. There's a lot of fucking cones in this story. At one point, Tommy mentioned he had some MDMA. I had only done it once before, and the three of us decided it would be a good idea to do some fucking MDMA with Jenny. We snorted our MD, and I shit you not... Jenny's bikey boyfriend comes into the lounge room sometime later, butt naked, his cock showing, and he is staring down Jenny. All right, you left that bit out, Tommy. You left big fucking biker cock out. Did Tommy leave it out or did Matt add it? Oh, this is what I like. Now these two can fucking fight over it for a few years. Hopefully it can break up their friendship. I swear I saw biker dick. No, you didn't. It was strong MD. One minute you're just an innocent kid sitting on a couch smoking bongs with someone's mum. The next minute you've seen biker dick and your life's changed forever. So the bike is staring down Jenny. Us boys were all silent and Jenny tells us she thinks it's best to leave and awkwardly rushes us three boys out. I didn't even react to what happened till I was out the front. It all happened so fast. So now us three boys were roaming a shitty neighbourhood starting to feel the effects of the caps kicking in and no idea what to do. We all just kept walking and decided it would be good to walk to the beach. By this time, the caps were in full swing and we were into deep conversations. Three teens capping their heads off, loving the world. Liam brought up that he wanted to see this girl, Sophie, who he had a huge crush on. She all knew us and Liam thought he had a chance with her. He called her and she said it would be all right to come over since she had mates over too. It was on the other side of town. Like literally a 40 kilometer walk. Ooh, there's a few inconsistencies there. You're saying 40. Tommy's saying 42. What the fuck was it? Was it 40 or 42? She offered us a taxi. All right, that checks out. But us boys were capping off our heads and thought our conversations were way too deep. And if we caught a taxi, it wouldn't give us enough time to finish our deep fucking conversations about whatever. 
So now our other mate, Adam, gave us a call and told us he'd finish at a party and he was capping off his head too. Perfect. We met up with Adam, who was also on his way to Sophie's. Who's this Sophie girl? She sounds like a future Jenny to me. And us four boys just kept walking, walking, walking and just having the best time of our lives, smoking darts, talking while on ecstasy. And at some point, Tommy took another cap and shoved it up his ass. All right, Tommy, where was this in the fucking story? Shelving a fucking pinger on the walk to Sophie's. That probably should have been mentioned in your story. Instead of mentioning you stuck your finger in your asshole, you decided to give us description of the fucking landscape and the moon's reflection off the sparkling water. Some big fucking holes in your story, Tommy. So Tommy was shoving a pill in his ass. I remember shouting out to him to stop sticking his fingers up his ass and swallow it. So around 4am we were pretty close to Sophie's. Mind you, we started walking at 10pm. At this, at this point, Sophie is starting to get sick of waiting. As you can imagine, the caps are dying off and everyone was fucked. I mean, proper exhausted, thirsty and hungry. And we pretty much did all this just so Liam could hook up with the girl he liked. So around 4.30am, we meet up at the primary school next to Sophie's house, but a security guard rocked up and we all had to run. Tommy freaked out and ditched all his drugs on the oval, which was pretty dumb. Are you sure he did that? I thought he would have just jammed them all in his ass. So we end up walking to Sophie's house, but weren't allowed in. Liam and her went for a walk and who knows what else. I know what else. Tommy told me. A fucking hand job. Then we had another three kilometer walk into the city to catch a tram home. I fucking struggled. We all did. And it was a two hour wait for the next train. I made it home and looking back at it, that was the night the four of us boys became best mates and we're still best mates to this day. I don't know if you can still be friends after this story. There's too many inconsistencies. What does Liam have to say about this? I want to hear Liam's side of this fucking story. But anyway, that's it. That was a fucking long one tonight. Thanks for sending in the Fucked Up Friday stories. Have a good weekend and see you the fuck later.